say the game is getting old. Monday morning and your coffee's cold. Life is not what you want it to be. You need Hello everyone and welcome to a new direction. My name is Jay Izzo. Wow! 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 That's all I can say about this show. Because come and tell you what. Okay. This book is called The Relationship Economy. The author is John R. DeJulius III. We're going to call him John, all right? Because I'm going to tell you something about this book. This book, game changer, blow your mind, blow away your business, forget everything anybody's ever told you about a number and P&Ls, because we're changing it. We're changing the label. It's not profits and losses. It's people and lives. This book is going to change your game in this decade. I promise you it will. Get your notepads, take some notes, because you're going to want to to read this book and you're definitely going to want to listen to the show at least seven times okay there it is that's what we're doing today okay because it's that kind of a show i am so stoked i am so excited over 20 pages of notes on this book and john de julius holy cow he's awesome so you're gonna love him hey but let's do what we do every week we can get to him so we can get to him faster so how do we get to him faster let's do what we do every week you know what we do every week we check in with you into the four areas of your life. You know that I believe that we are four-part people. We are physical people, we're mental people, we're emotional people, and we're spiritual people, right? And so let's check in to see where you're at. First, first we're going to check in with this physical area, right? Scale of 1 to 10, 1 being miserable, 10 being outstanding. Where are you at physically? And what I'm asking you is I'm asking you to evaluate yourself, kind of you know, how you feel, of course, physically, but I, you know, how are you doing in terms of the three main areas? Are you eating right? Are you exercising and are you getting enough sleep? Okay. And before you jump on me about sleep, trust me, when it comes to your health, sleep is really, really important. So in those three areas, are you eating right? Are you getting exercise and are you getting enough sleep? How would you evaluate yourself on a scale of one to 10? One being miserable, 10 outstanding. Five's in the middle, right? So you, so you got a number? Okay. That's your first number. All right. Second number, same scale, one to 10, one miserable, 10 outstanding. How are you doing mentally? And what do I mean mentally? You have two halves of your brain. You have a right side of your brain, which is a creative kind of a creative side of your brain. The left side of your brain is the more logical side of your brain. What are you feeding to grow in your knowledge, in your wisdom, in your skills and abilities? What are you doing to learn ultimately? And how would you say you would rate yourself on that? It's a brand new year. So, you know, you can cut yourself a little slack, but you can get better, right? Okay, so... You got a number between 1 and 10? How are you doing there? So you got two numbers, right? You got a physical number. You got a mental number. All right. Listen, first first of all, whatever that number is, I don't want you to panic because there, there's two questions you need to ask yourself. The first question is, you know, why are you that number, right? Because we need to identify the why. But the second question is, what can you change right now to make that number go up? And we're not trying to get you. If you're a 3, don't panic, okay? It's early. If you're a 3, I'm not trying to get you a 10. Let's just try to get you to a 4 or maybe a 3.5. Okay, so I, I, I don't, don't, we just want to make progress here, okay? So you got two numbers, you got a physical number, a mental number, and then third is this, third area is this emotional. And what do I mean by emotional? Well, there's there's two ways to look at emotion. We talk a lot about, and you know, as a psychological professional, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, emotional quotients or emotional intelligence. But the truth is, if I were to really boil it down and really oversimplify it, it's two things. How well are you able to control your emotions under stress, right? That's the first one. And then the second one is how well are you able to tap into the emotions of other people? Right. The, the beautiful thing about what John's going to do today is John's going to talk to us about, you know, how do we, how, how good are you with empathy? Empathy is so critical to our business. It's critical to our lives. It's critical to relationships. But really, we're talking about empathy here. Okay. How well can you really tap into those emotions and understand the emotions of another person? And then how well can you control your emotions under stress? What would you give yourself on a rating? One's miserable, ten's outstanding. All right? So that's your third number. And then finally, the spiritual number. And I get a lot of I get a lot of blowback on the spiritual part because people will tell me that they're not spiritual, but we all are spiritual on some level. I know that you don't want to believe that you are, but we really are. Because the truth of the matter is we put in put our faith in something that gives us peace or joy. Right? I didn't say happiness. I said peace or joy. Something that settles us, something that's at the core of us, something that touches us at the very heart of ourselves. And, you know, if you remove the mental, the physical, and the emotional, whatever's left, I think you can call that spiritual. 
And so whether that is you believe in God or whether it is you believe in nature or you believe in karma or whatever it may be that you believe in, maybe you believe in the power of meditation, maybe you just have uh, faith in the world at large, I don't, it, whatever it may be, the question becomes, how is that working for you and how are you doing with it? So if it is God, how's that relationship going? If it's nature, how's that going? Right? So you have four numbers, right? Those numbers are like the legs of a chair. And if the legs of a chair are uneven, what happens is uh, it's very difficult on your posture, which means that you're not as healthy as you could be. But if the legs of the chair are too low, it means that also that you're not very healthy and it's going to be very hard to get in and out of that chair and, and, and be able to take care of yourself on a level that you should be taking care of yourself. So the whole idea is to bring the chair legs up and be well balanced in those four areas of your life. And speaking of well balanced and speaking of someone who is absolutely awesome, his name is John R. DeJulius. John DeJulius is the author, uh, the authority on customer service. He's best selling author, international keynote speaker and consultant, and he's also a TEDx speaker. Uh, John's best-selling books include The Relationship Economy, The Customer Service Revolution, What's the Secret to Providing World-Class Customer Experience, and Secret Service. John works with companies like, uh, you may have heard of these. Let me just throw a few out. The Ritz-Carlton. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're okay. Uh, Lexus. Okay. Yeah. Starbucks. Yeah. Okay. Nordstrom. Okay. okay I, like, I like them, actually. Nestle. Marriott Hotels. PwC. Harley Davidson. Who doesn't like a hog? Char- Chick-fil-A and many more. John works with companies that want to make customer experience their competitive advantage and make price irrelevant and become the brand customers cannot live without and dare I say that customers love. He isn't when he's not talking about it, John lives it. He's a very successful entrepreneur, entrepreneur of three businesses. The De Julius Group, a consulting and speaking firm focused on changing the world by creating a customer service revolution. John Roberts Spa, a chain of upscale salons and spas, repeatedly named one of the top 20 salons in America, and Believe in Dreams, a nonprofit that fulfills dreams of economically disadvantaged youth who have survived non-medical adversity. He wanted to be a second baseman for the Cleveland Indians. He's got a beautiful <laughs> wife, Claudia, and three sons. So please welcome to the show, everybody, and welcome to A New Direction, John Hard Julius. Welcome to the show, John. <laughs> Jay, thank you. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah, this is awesome. This book is uh, this book. Uh, you had right? one thing wrong on my bio, and, and we got we to gotta address it. Okay, what is that? I wanted to be a shortstop for the Cleveland Indians. I'm, oh. I'm still holding out for that. Are you still? I think they're going to call me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? So if I have to, if I have to click over during this interview, uh, you know, you'll understand why. Yeah, if they're because I understand that they're looking for another shortstop. Sorry, I said second baseman. That's so funny, and I knew it was the shortstop. Who was who was it? Was it when we were like 10 years old? Was it like Buddy Bell or something like that that was playing for the like third baseman? Yeah, Buddy Bell was a third well, baseman. Wow, just aided just I didn't think you were as old as I was. Yeah, yeah. Well, Buddy Bell was our third baseman. Yeah, who was the shortstop? Was it was it um, uh, Brinkman? And, uh, a ton. Frank Duffy, Tom Verizon. Oh, Verizon. Duffy. Duffy. Yeah, yeah. Never ain't they great. Yeah, great names, right? Julio Franco for a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Julio Franco for a while. Yeah, no, great. Well, and and so I'm glad that you corrected me on the second baseman short stuff thing versus <laughs> correcting me on Claudia and Three Sons. That one would have <laughs> devast- devastated me right. to death. So let's <laughs> let's jump into this book right away, The Relationship Economy, because we are filled with technology today, and that technology has changed how we communicate, of course, on several levels, which you write about. But why is relationships so important in terms of our business life? Well, and and I'll extend it to, you know, our personal life. uh, but, But, you know, today's illiterate are those who have an inability to make a meaningful connection with others. And, you know, that's just where we're at. And, and, you know, it's, 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 there's a seismic shift happening in the world uh, with technologies bringing us amazing advancements and and uh, conveniences, but it's coming at a considerable cost. And that cost is human relationships, which you know drive customer loyalty, employee satisfaction, and just overall uh, happiness. And, you know, so I'm not here beating up on technology. I love technology. I'm guilty. If you could see my desk right now, I have every gadget imaginable. Technology is not the enemy, but replacing it to eliminate the human experience is. Mm, I love that. 
So you talk about uh, the benefits of strong connections. And in one of your pieces here, you talk about strong relationships have a greater potential for, and I'm just going to list these out, professional success, less impacted by corporate politics, laugh more, experience left suppression, living a longer life, improved overall, overall health, and are happiest. And you mentioned that. But what I found interesting was the lack of social relationships was equivalent to smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, all this stuff was was, you know, I didn't know this. I didn't expect it. If, if I would, I think I, if I would have heard a speaker say that, I've been calling BS. Uh, but uh, that doctors have found it has similar side effects wow. as people that smoke, you know, 15 cigarettes a day. So if you're a smoker, you're really in trouble. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so so quit smoking 2020. You make right. a statement that I think people will want to challenge here and you, you say people crave human interaction and I am hearing millennials and even other people say I don't want to talk to humans anymore. But you say people crave human interaction. Why do you say that? Well, I think the pendulum has swung so far over to high tech, low touch or no touch that because of all this digital, um, you know, transactions that we have now that we do yearn for someone to know our name, someone to know, you know, that I have three boys and to ask me how they're doing and or, or you know, know something about me. And listen, you know, in, in my three businesses, I have 150 employees. The majority of them, probably well over 100 are millennials. And I'm finding nothing um what people say about millennials. Uh, number one, it, it's hilarious that our generation is typically the generation that beats up on them. Uh, yet, are we forgetting <laughs> that we're the one that raised them? Um, but, but number two, uh, you know, they are great. They're they're better at customer service yeah. than you know the previous generations. As long as you understand one thing, as a business leader, the currency for millennials is purpose. And if you understand it, what I like about millennials and they've kind of, you know, forced us all to change, they they will they are not willing to trade hours for dollars like like maybe our gener maybe our parents were doing, mm -hmm. you know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. You know, it, but if you provide, you know, a purpose around their jobs, they will work harder, longer, give up better deals on paper and just better than any. I mean, they could be rock stars and. Um, and they pick and choose, and, and I do too. Listen, um, digital the, the digital disruption. There, there's there's great conveniences. I had to bring my my laptop in um, a couple weeks ago, and you know I went on Apple and, and booked the appointment with the uh, the the concierge, or the uh, the um, I forget what they call it, the Genius Bar. Right. And it took me 30 seconds to do that online. Um, love that. Um, artificial intelligence works a heck of a lot better than calling, you know, waiting what would seem to be, you know, 20 minutes. It might be, you know, three to seven minutes. But, you know, 30 seconds, that's great. Now I got to go inside and then meet with someone and tell them about, you know, what was wrong and they fixed it. And so I got the human interaction when I needed it. And I got the digital interaction that was more convenient for me. That's awesome. We're talking with John DeJulius. Uh, the Relationship Economy is the name of the book. It's an absolutely outstanding read. Uh, by the way, if people uh, typically ask me, who is this book for? Well, let me tell you. Let me go through the list. First of all, well, actually, I don't have enough time for that, but let me just tell you that. If you're CEO, CFO, CMO, CXO, and if you don't have a CXO, you should get one because John talks about that. If you are a salesperson, if you're an administrative person, if you're pushing a broom, if you're not pushing a broom, if you're cleaning toilets, if you are a student, if you are an emerging student, if you are a 13-year-old uh, who writes blogs, you should read this book. OK, because there's actually a 13 year old who actually has part of his blog in here. OK, and I'm just I'm just telling you, his name's Bo and he's got his. So you need to, you, it, it's, it, it, it's a it's a great it's a great book. And that's a shout out to Bo to Julius, by the way. Just want to give him a shout out because he was awesome. <laughs> um, what it takes to master rapport building. Uh, you have five you have five criteria for that. And you say they must be authentic. They must be obsessively curious, a great listener, have incredible empathy, and must love people. Why those five? Well, you know, the art of building relationship is is key, and 
you know, make no mistake about it. The decline in people skills every generation is is suffering from is the problem of business leaders to solve. Um, and, and the best companies train their existing and new employees on the art of building relationship. It's not, you know, human nature. Um, you know, we, we are uh, all relationship disadvantaged for many of the reasons we've already discussed. So, um, you know, this is something that to a lot of people may feel like common sense, but, you know, older generations have gotten away from, you know, because we're living in a touchscreen age right. and, and, and younger generations at no fault of their own have, have never been exposed to this. So, you know, we got to do this. And of those five things, I, I, I know for a fact that four of them can be trained. Now, if you can find it on the interview process, all the better. But four of them absolutely can be trained. Um, the one that I don't think you all the training in the world will move the needle is must love people. Mm. That is something that that you have to find uh, on your interview process, and 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 there's ways to you know do that. But you you, you know it, 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 if you're gonna come work for me and and you just are not a people person and there's nothing about you know anything that excites you about people, I can't train you and change you. Mm. I can you know make make you realize what authenticity looks like. I can teach you what what uh, you know having more curiosity looks like mm. um empathy and 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 we can all learn to be gr uh, better listeners but the one thing that i don't think can be taught is a genuine love for people mm. you're so I, it, wow and it is it is the one you know when you started going talking about these five areas in the book and i reflecting back on them the one thing i kept saying to myself number 5 which was must love people if we want to change a world. That's the one that's got to change. Doesn't yeah. Matter. I mean, if we really, if people are really genuinely and honest about you want a world that's going to change, that you want a world living in peace, that you want a world, isn't it that one? And that's the only one that comes from within inside you that you can't train. Yeah, you know, I, I think it, you know, comes from you know your your environment, you know, and 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 you know how you were raised. Um, and, and just, you know, just your outlook and, and the, you know, especially like your, your opening four um, things that you talk about. You know, I was grading myself and, you know, right now I'm, I'm in a very low stool, you know, <laughs> I need to <laughs> add some length to those legs. But I mean, you know, it's, it's all those things. You, you got to be operating on all your cylinders, it, 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 you know, and be feeding and watering each one of those areas. If, mm -hmm. it, it, like you said, if any of those get way out of balance, um, you know, the first person you're not going to like is yourself. Wow. 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 That's powerful. Uh, we're talking with, uh, uh John R. DeJulius the third, uh, he goes by John, uh, it's the relationship economy is the name of the book. It's an outstanding read. You can find it on Amazon bookstores near you. Uh, if it is not in a bookstore, you tell them dug on it, get it in there now and get a whole bunch of them because it's going to sell like the, the, it's, it's an amazing read. I'm just telling you. Um, I am convincing teams to read this book because it's it's a book that I believe uh, every team, every company needs to have this as part of their arsenal if they are going to be competitive in this next decade. And if you're going to change and if you and stop playing the numbers game, folks, stop playing it. Stop playing the numbers game. Stop playing the marketing game. Start stop stop the whole idea that people are just a lead. All right, stop it. You, you've got to get real, and that's what this book, The Relationship Economy, does. And uh, we're talking with um, John DeJulius here. In Chapter 2, you give us a, a statistic by Servion that by 2025, 95% of interactions will be robotic. So what's the difference about the relationship economy? Well, I mean, they say that, you know, uh, by 2025, there'll be more machines in the workforce than, than humans and that artificial intelligence will be. And, and, and it's probably almost already there being able to do everything that, you know, professionals do today from from nurses to doctors, judges to lawyers. Um, driving to construction and and something I just found out um, I, I never heard of this but someone you know when I said this said oh did you know um, that there are artificial intelligent brothels now 
Um, I'm not judging. I'm not endorsing. <laughs> I'm just reporting. But I mean, you want to talk about? I mean, you know, you don't have to see another person as long as you live. Uh, you know, it's it's crazy. So you know, again, there there's a there's a um. I think, you know, like everything we've seen historically for, you know, the last several centuries, people jump on the bandwagon and go too far with something. Right. And we just got to be careful. Um, the, the, you know, there's a wireless company in, in Canada that um, is punishing their customers if they want to speak to a human being. So, uh, um, you know, they have they're trying to force you to do their self-service kiosks and website attendance and, you know, messaging and all that. But if you have a, a problem with uh, your phone support or you need to speak to someone about your, your billing statement and you call in, they charge your account $10. Mm. So, I mean, that's that's the example of just taking it too far. I mean, obviously, there's a whole generation that just won't go online and do those things, um, you know, and we can't punish them. And then there's other times where, you know, people who are tech savvy can't figure it out. So, right. we, you know, we, we want to speak to a human being. You got to be where, where, where the, the customer wants you to be. So what's the difference? What's the difference in the relationship economy? It's it, 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 it's marrying the the uh, digital with the with the human um, experience, and you know the relationship economy is where the primary currency is the emotional connection made with customers, employees, and vendors, and and it's 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 about using technology to perform basic tasks enabling freeing up employees to focus on what's most important right which is building relationships that result in higher customer loyalty retention lifetime value and job satisfaction you know i'm not loyal to an app um you know i i i'll use uh uber and lyft you know interchangeably you know whoever wherever i is closer to where i'm at you know if, if, if one is is 11 minutes away and the other one's four minutes away i'm choosing the four minutes right. uh, an app doesn't make me a loyal but 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 you know a, a human being does we we do business with so you know as you mentioned earlier my whole thing is about making price irrelevant and and making price irrelevant doesn't mean we can double our fees um, and, and or even raise them 25 percent and not lose existing or potential customers. But what making price irrelevant does mean is based on the experience your brand, everyone in your brand consistently delivers. Um, your customers have no idea what your competition charges. Mm. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure, you know, I, I'm the idiot that's driven three extra miles to save 50 cents on something, not realizing I just lost in that exchange. <laughs> but I also have, you know, a, a small handful of people that, you know, uh, you know, if you told me you were looking for, if we, you know, neighbors and you're saying, oh, I got to, you know, get some, some work done around the house. I'm like, you got to use hoop. Mm. And you'd be like, what's a hoop? <laughs> and and that's my handyman. He doesn't work for me, but I've used him for 30 years. Greatest guy ever. And I, you know, I refer him to everyone and, you know, he, he, you know, uh, brag about him, written about him. And, you know, a lot of times people say, well, well hold on. Well, what's he charged per hour? And, because my, you know, handyman charges, you know, 110. Right. And that's where I'm embarrassed. I say, you know, I'll say, Jay, I have no idea. I mean, I can call my assistant and have her pull out his, but I don't care. He could be 85. He could be 150. Right. I don't care. He saves me money, peace of mind, does it right every right. time. And so, you know, that's what making price irrelevant looks like is if you're that good, people aren't, aren't, aren't price shopping you. That's awesome. His name is Don, John DeJulius. His book is entitled The Relation, the Relationship Economy. It is the building stronger customer connections in the digital age. It's going to give you the competitive edge here in this next decade. Speaking of competitive edges, epic physical therapy, whether you're recovering from an injury or surgery, suffering everyday aches and pains, having difficulty performing activities of daily living, are unable to perform athletic activities, or just looking to improve how you feel and move. Well, they are the new sponsors of A New Direction. They are the elite team is what they are really at Epic Physical Therapy. They will provide you with a customized treatment plan that is tailored to your individual needs. With their, with their amazing experience, and by the way, they're all certified, in rehabbing young athletes to elite professionals to you know everyday Joes just like me. They understand the need to treat the entire body as a functional whole, not just your symptoms or injury. Epic relief, epic recovery, epic results. Why not find out why they're so epic? And you can be epic too by going to epicpt.com. That's E-P-I-C-P-T.com. And also, a special thanks to Linda Craft and Team Realtors. They have been our sponsor since the very beginning, and we want to thank them. 
you know what? They can help you anywhere in the world. The fact of the matter is, is they can help you find the right professional regardless of where you're at. Even if you're in Norway and Poland who just joined us recently as downloading a new direction, they can help you find the right professional there. Because why? Because they don't belong to any company. They are their own company. So they have 35 years of establishing relationships all over the world where they can pick and choose the best person from any company anywhere to help you sell or buy your next home. And if you happen to be in the Research Triangle Park of North Carolina, they can help you to stop in their office at 73. Six Forks Road. Say hello to the culture that says they are the legends of customer service because that's how they've been at the top of the game for 35 years and running because they truly are, when it comes to customer service, the legends. It's part of their culture. It's not something they say. So check them out at lindacraft.com. Head on over, L I N D A C R A F T. Dot com. And we're back here with John DeJulius and his book entitled The Relationship Economy. And, uh, you know, one of the things, John, that um, you talk about is one thing that machines can't do is they cannot show compassion and empathy in a genuine way. And I thought that that was so critical because you then lead into why employees lack customer empathy. And you, the very first statement you say is your employees do not know what world class is. Why? Well, I mean, you know, think about, you know, us growing up and, and it's no different for anybody. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I didn't stay at five star resorts no. uh, when I turned 16. Nope. Um, you know, I didn't get a Mercedes Benz. Um, nope. You know, I drove a rust bucket that they wouldn't even allow on the road today. <laughs> um, you know, wasn't flying first class, you know, any of that. But the moment we got our first jobs and the moment we hire people, we expect them to give that type of an experience right. to those types of customers, clients, patients, tenants. And it's just not fair. I mean, I, I think the golden rule um, is the worst uh, compass for your customer service. I don't want my 23 year olds. Uh, my, my son just graduated from college. Great kid. Nice kid. But if you told you know him, Johnny the fourth, hey Johnny, I want you to treat my clients the way you like to be treated, that would be a huge mistake. He 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 put out a fist pump. He'd say, dude, you'd have to ask him to you know wear a belt because his his pants are sagging too low, right? Now if you give him training, you know the right kind of training, he could be a rock star in in a few short weeks or months, but. Um, you know, where we're coming from and where we need to be is two totally different things. That's, that's awesome. So now I'm going to ask the question that you ask us in the book. So now I'm going to ask you, all right, you ask me, what has a better ROI, investing in advertising or customer service? I mean, if, if you look at all the um, top customer service companies in the world, from Zappos, Am Amazon, you know, Virgin Airlines, you know, all of them, they advertise the least in their industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it just you, you don't have to advertise when you take really, really good care of your customers. They will do more, you know, marketing for you than, you know, the, 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 the largest of advertising budgets could ever. Mm. Yeah, it, I, I find it interesting that, you know, we don't, we think we give, I think we, don't you think that we actually believe we give pretty good customer service or we give great customer service, but we're kind of lying to ourselves if we really were to examine it? Well, Bain and Company did this great survey. They asked 300 C-level executives that question. The, the question was, um, how many, uh, you know, what what percentage or how, how many of you, 300, um, feel that you your company delivers, um, you know, superior customer service? 80% said their, their companies did. So must be an impressive group. But what they didn't know was at the same time, they were surveying 3,000 of their customers. 8% of their customers agree with them. I mean – that it's I mean, that's such a huge disparity. And if we think about our our own experiences as consumers, you right, you know, how many experiences do you have to have a day and a day, a week or a month um, before you stop and say, holy cow, what's your name? Man, you're you're a rock star. Where's your manager? I want to tell. I want to write a letter. I want to post on Yelp. I want to bring this story back to work on Monday and share it with my team. I mean, I don't know about you, but. If that happens one out of 30 times, I feel like I hit the lottery. Right, right. Um, right, right. You know, and, and, and so 
you know, we, we don't know what our customers really value. And, and I think that's the big, biggest disconnect. And, and we're not our customers. Uh, you know, back to, you know, if you think of most customer facing employees, I mean, even if you look at the Ritz Carlton, the kid parking cars for the Ritz Carlton, you know, Mercedes and Maseratis and whatever is coming up there, um, you know, he drives, you know, nothing like that. Right. right. He's never stayed at a Ritz Carlton. So so we we, it, it, we have to teach our frontline employees, our customer facing employees, what world class looks like and, and also teach them what a day in the life of a customer is. And that's really where you get the empathy and compassion, because, you know, the biggest you know fault that we're all guilty of is becoming numb to next, our mm. next customer. I got this one o'clock podcast. I got this, you know, Tuesday I got a keynote in, you know, Chicago. Um, mm. My hair salons, you know, the biggest challenge I had when I was involved in them day to day is uh, we're really high end and, and you know, but a hairdresser would look at your wife as her 5.30 haircut, her eighth appointment of the day, her right. third last one so she can get the hell out of here and right. be off for the weekend. Right. Meanwhile, your wife has asked you to buy her this nice gift certificate for her birthday, Valentine's Day. She gets it. She blocks off. You know, today's the day. And we're looking at her as a 5.30. And, and every every industry is guilty of that. You know, right. you know, the hospitals look at their customers as 201B, right? Room and bed number. And I'm not criticizing anybody. We all can become guilty of it. So when you think about a day in the life of the customer and the struggles and, and the battles they're going with and how you can come to the rescue for them, it really makes you more present. Yeah, it does make you. And, and I love – you are so good. We're talking with John DeJulius, by the way, author of The Relationship Economy. You're so good because you're leading me right into my next question. Do you know where I'm going? Because I have not sent you my questions I, because I don't even know where my questions are. So how you're reading my mind, I don't know. So, because <laughs> so, we're talking about connection and in chapter five, which the title is enti- entitled Meet a Strangers, Leave His Friends, um, you have you have this little thing and I loved it. It's highlighted for me and I'm looking at the highlight right now. It says, made a connection with someone, prove it. Yeah. And you talk about Ford. Let's talk about, we're not talking about the car here either, folks, but let's, can you, can you walk us through Ford and why Ford is so important for us and building relationships with our, not only our next customer, we probably need to be doing this because we didn't do it with our past customers or our current customers. Yeah, Meet a Strangers, Leave His Friends is the title of my TEDx talk. It's nine minutes and 30 seconds, and I strongly encourage you to show it to your kids. I mean, it's it's as much personal as it is professional, but um, we are all um, genetically coded to be preoccupied with our world, right? It's my flight that's delayed. It's my son that got in trouble at school. <laughs> it's my customer that's, you know, upset with us. And that's that's a battle, you know, when we come into contact with others, not, you know, to get off yourself and focus on them. And, you know, Stephen Covey is, is, is famous for saying that people don't listen with the intent of understanding. They listen with the intent of replying, which is so true. And, and one of my favorite uh, findings is that scientists studied um, the human brain and said it takes uh, a minimum of 0.6 seconds for a brain to formulate a response to something said to it. And then they studied hundreds, thousands of conversations and found the average gap between people talking was 0.2 seconds. Mm. One third the time our brain will allow us. So obviously, you know, we're not processing what we're hearing. We have our answer, you know, long before the other person, you know, gets done talking. So, you know, one of the things I say is, you know, if, if, if you met someone, you know, at Starbucks this morning, you spoke to them for three minutes or 33 minutes, you know, how, you know, the, the way you can prove to me that you, you were working on a, a building a rapport is you have to know two or more things of their Ford. And, and so F stands for family, right? Is he married? Does she, does, does she have kids? How old are the kids? Um, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. How old are the kids? Um, oh, occupation. Uh, what do they do? Who do they do it for? What's their title? How long they've been doing it? The R Recreation might be people's hottest buttons. What do they do on their day off? Well, you know, they they runners. You know, they 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 love dogs. They hot yoga, whatever that. Coach little league, whatever that may be. And then D is for dreams. What's what's on their bucket list? What's their encore career performance? And and what's you know on on their their uh, dream vacation list? Mm. And those are the four. That's Ford. And you talk about that 
when you are focused on your Ford, when, when you meet somebody, right, that one of the things you say is, I can't be focused on myself. You know, you, there, there's no way for me to do it. And then you encourage people immediately to write this down. And then, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of our clients, we have it, you know, you're able to customize any CRM system, right? right, like right. If you use Salesforce, you can customize that. So when we're on the phone, when you're talking to things from Raleigh, you know, Raleigh, North Carolina, you know, whatever it may be, you know, it, children, all, any Ford facts, you can put that in. And now anyone else that comes in contact with that person can, can access that type of information. Yeah, and I think the beautiful thing about Ford, and you do, of course, talk about this later in this chapter, is you know that when I'm focused on the family, the occupation, the recreational, and the dreams, right? If I'm focused on that, now I've started moving into that art of listening because I, I do have to then listen to understand. I have to listen with empathy, and I got to shut up, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. But but right. What, but. What, but one of the terms that you use in the art of listening is fierce listening. What is that? You know, and this is all done from research, and, and this was a painful um, section to write because, man, did it expose uh, how many things I do wrong. Mm. Um, but, you know, fierce listening uh, uh, is if you ask a question and don't ask two to three follow-up questions, odds are you weren't listening. So, you know, it's like, you know, four to one ratio of questions asked versus answered that you want to be, you know, at. I, I love, I just love that. I just love the idea of being a fierce listener. I, 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 I have decided to put that down as a new 2020 goal is that I'm going to be a fierce listener. I just love that. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's because I'm six feet four, six feet five inches tall, but I just want. Yeah, to be... you're fierce uh, to begin <laughs> with, right? I want to be a fierce listener, man. That's that's how I want to be. So our superpowers for understanding others. You give us two: empathy and compassion. Talk about those two superpowers. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just something like we're the only you know living species that have that ability. Um, to, you know, have empathy and, and compassion for another. And, you know, when we put ourselves, you know, in someone else's shoes and really think of it from their terms, it changes everything. And, you know, we can really relate and we can empathize. Doesn't mean we can always, you know, move mountains for them. But, you know, I always say, if I can't say yes, if someone on my team can't say yes to a request, I want them to, you know, say it in a way that actually the the customer feels bad for them because how how painful it is you know for me not to be able to you know make this happen and you know if, if the customer's like no john that's not your fault no jay it is i'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight oh no 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 john i should have you know ordered this you know earlier than you know <laughs> last minute or whatever that may be um you know that's you know it, it, you're really showing that you understand where they're coming from um you know and and i think that's just a it's a, a critical piece to listening and empathizing and, and showing compassion and being in the shoes of the customer that's awesome we're talking with i love that by the way i just i just love that, that we have superpowers of empathy and compassion i just i never thought of them as a superpower but when the more i read it and the more you said it the more it it, it just became true. Uh, the Relationship Economy is the book. And we're talking to the author, best-selling author, John DeJulius. So will you do us a huge favor? You talk Absolutely. about we perform at our best when we make a personal connection. There are five E's. Can you, or would you be willing to pontificate on the five E's? Eye contact, yeah. ear-to-ear smile, enthusiastic greeting, engage and educate, and why those are so important? Would you be willing to? Well, I... Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest thing in anything, um, especially customer service training and the mistake that people make is they'll say, you know, hey, um, you know, our motto is we go above and beyond or we're customer first or customers, whatever you want to call it. That's great. Um, But if you tell 10 people, 100 people that and that's the only thing you give them as their marching orders, um, you're going to get 100 personal interpretations. If I tell you to, you know, Jay, go out, young Jay, Jay, Jay Jr., go out and deliver um, genuine hospitality. Right. And that's all I tell you. Well, I mean, you know, you tell that that will be processed, interpreted, you know, a million different ways. So when we say genuine hospitality, we put we make it black and white with walls on it. And, mm-hmm. and, and if you're going to deliver genuine hospitality, you have to do the five E's. 
the five E's take less than five seconds to do. You have to do with everyone you come in contact with. Um, the first three take one second to do simultaneously. So it's eye contact, enthusiastic greet, ear to ear smile. So if I see you or, or like you did when, when we got on the, the call today, uh, you did all three of those things, right? You were so engaged. You're like, John, I am having an amazing day. And how are you? I mean, you know, I, I, I was energized just by your hello, and I haven't even said anything. Then uh, the, the uh, fourth one is engage. Um, engage them. It's about them. It's it's the Ford. It's, you know, focusing on them. And then the fifth one is educate. And, and that's critical. Um, every time – I talk to someone on your team. Um, I should be, I don't care if it's the call center, if, if it's a hostess, if, if whoever it is, I should walk away, hang up, read an email and say, wow, no one knows their job better than that person. And so that's it. That's the five E's and, and they're, it's easy to do and, and it's measurable and I can, I can, I can see, you know, who's doing it and who's not. This is the beauty of your book. Okay. I, I, I don't know if people are catching on to the beauty of your book. But what you're asking people to do is not difficult, but it does take intention. And 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 you're right. I, I can't make people love people. You're right. But everything pretty much that we've talked about is trainable, is doable, and it's something that if, if these are little – you make – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it away, so let's not do that. You know what? Let's do this. Do you know that New Direction has a new sponsor? Their name is their name is in fact Epic Physical Therapy. They offer the most advanced top of the line equipment including the Alter G anti-gravity treadmill. It's by the way it's amazing. Uh, it takes the pressure off your knees and joints. The Normatec compression sleeves. If you've never tried a compression sleeve, amazing and game ready. Trust me, after a knee replacement that I had, the Game Ready was my best friend after every surgery. So just to name a few. Hey, they're trained and certified in the most comprehensive cutting-edge treatments available, including blood flow restriction therapy, dry needling, cupping. If you've seen the Olympic swimmers with those little circles on their backs, it's called cupping. It's really awesome. I've had that done. It's amazing. You can learn how they can make you more epic by going to epicpt.com. That's epicpt, E-P-I-C-P-T.com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, located in Raleigh, North Carolina. They've been around for 35 years, and they have developed a culture of legendary customer service. That's why they're around, and they're still at the top of their game, because it is what they are. And it's not a motto because their motto for years has been we know our business but you know what they do they don't have to tell people i do i tell them because their customer service is amazing it is about year and that's why customers have been going back to them since 1985 they love them and so you know what why not go to 7300 six forks road if you happen to be in the greater research triangle park raleigh durham chapel hill area and why don't you come on in and i promise you the first thing that they'll do is going to say how about a bottle of water that's the first thing they're going to hand you. And then ask them anything that you want to ask them. They're happy to help you out. And if you want a cup of coffee, they'll even get you a cup of coffee. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's that simple. Right? They have all sorts of things available. So why not check out Linda Craft and her team at lindacraft.com, L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T.com. And we're back here with John DeJulius and his book, The Relationship Economy. I, you know, I got so excited there, John, before we took a break because I was about to jump ahead and I had to tell myself to shut up because you started leading me down and I was like, but I want to get to, but I want to get, but I want to, and I got to go, Jay, stop it. Because Mm -hmm. the beautiful thing about this book, and I will reiterate it again to the listeners and the future readers, by the way, all over the world, the, the, the beautiful thing about this book is these are things that you can do if you are willing to do them. And, 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 and I mean like three, two, one. I love three, two, one. Everybody could be doing three, two, one, right? Couldn't they, John? Could we, could... Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, we recommend doing it, you know, every, you know, you know, one day a week, same time, Wednesday, eight 30 in the morning, it takes less than 10 minutes. And it's, it's, it's reaching out to a past, uh, or active client that you're, currently not communicating with regularly and and you know you, you send out three emails you write two cards and you make one phone call a week Just, a week you know you do it once a week and you know you keep track of it and in a non-soliciting way so you're like you know hey dear jay i happened to be in raleigh last weekend i i was in and out um made me think of you uh it, it also made me you know realize you know you were one of the reasons why i love 
what I do. Mm. That's it. Yeah, happy New Year, happy fall, happy summer, happy spring. But mm. no, no soliciting, not saying, hey, Jay, I got another book, I got another product, we right. have it. You know, just a touch base to stay in front. Now, you want to keep track of it so Jay's not getting that, you know, card or email every week and, and gets a little <laughs> nervous. Uh, but yeah, that's a simple three, two, one to just keep yourself in front of, you know, your customers in a non soliciting, warm, forward way. That's awesome. Can we can we move to talking about can, I'm going to do it with my radio voice. All right. So I'm going to do this with my radio voice. Can we All talk right. about love, John? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about love in your business, John, because I want people to love me. Well, can we talk about love in business, John? I I wish we would. It's it's a it's a four letter word in business and too many people are afraid to use it and express it. I tell my employees and my customers I love them all the time and I genuinely mean that. And uh Seth Godin had a great um blog one time. It said out love your customers. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry, out love your competition. Mm. And I just love that. And the way I interpreted it is listen, you know, in a lot of cases we can't outspend our 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 uh, competitors. You know, they're pretty smart. We can't outthink them necessarily. Um, we can't outwork them. They're working hard too, but we can't outlove them. And and one of the things is is we do, and we have our clients do customer appreciation events. And it's not in the traditional sense that everyone thinks, oh, let's have them all come in on January 5th and we'll have hors d'oeuvres and wine. I'm not talking about that. The customer appreciation events I'm talking about is just with your your staff and you meet, you know, Thursday and you go around the room and you just everyone take one second and tell me who your your two favorite, three favorite clients are and why. Hmm. And so, you know, Jay says, oh, man, you know, Betty, you know, from ABC, course, she is awesome. I'll tell you, I screwed up. And drop the ball. And she was like, oh, God, don't worry about it. You know, you guys are the greatest. Like, like, I can't believe how cool she is to work with. And you kind of go all around the room because obviously the opposite is happening too often. Right. You go back in the lunchroom and and, and, and Jay says, oh, you wouldn't believe the client from how I just had. And then I oh, <laughs> oh, that's nothing compared to the one I had last week. And then, you know. Time, you know, it seems like, you know, uh, uh, 80 percent of the time we're talking about the one percent of, you know, miserable clients that we could all have. So reverse that. Let's all talk about the great clients we have. And then we will go there with a bounce in our step saying, man, we're lucky. We got great clients. We got a great job, you know, and, and, and you, you ha it just puts that whole uh, gratitude and appreciation, you know, towards the next person you're about to serve. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things you talk about in the book is you ask the question, and I thought it was a really great question. Think about the businesses that you love, right? And and why do you love them? And then, you know, and it, it's really a simple question, but I think it's one that you challenged me with in terms of not in terms of my own business, but you know, as a coach, you know, when I'm coaching other businesses just like you do, is to also to say to my executives that I coach is, okay, why, why do people love you? Why should they love you? And I, because, and here, here's where it kind of pulled together for me because I feel the linchpin in this entire book. This is just me. Okay. Because I'm a psychological professional. So this is me is Daniel Kahneman's work. And uh, Dr. Kahneman uh, is a Nobel peace prize winner and Nobel prize winner. And he, sorry, Nobel prize winner in psychology for proving, literally demonstrating beyond a shadow of doubt that we behave emotionally, not rationally. And I believe that this is part of the linchpin, at least for me in the book, that says when you understand that your client, that your customer is behaving emotionally and not rationally, and you bring this point up yourself in the book, that should change the way not only you deal with customers, but it should also change the way that we do business with customers. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, that that's, I think, the biggest disconnect, you know, especially for newer employees. But, you know, even, even long-term employees, we forget. And so, you know, you might have someone that, to you, overreacts to something that, again, pales in comparison to what could go wrong, right? right. Um, but you don't know what their circumstance, where they're coming from, what they just found out at home or work or their parents or whatever this could be, their child, 
Um, and you know, a lot of times our best customers are, 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 are people that come all the time and, and this could be an escape. They have a, um, a perception of, oh, I can't wait to deal with, you know, them because, you know, and, and then when we fail to deliver that wrecks it, that, that, you know, that, that threw them off. And, you know, who are we to judge that, you know, oh, the, the, that they, they're overreacting, you know, I mean, you know, the, the people that overreact are, are typically, the, you know, our, our best customers who have high expectations. And when you have a good reputation, think about the Ritz Carlton, think about Chick-fil-A, think about any of the, the great brands, their reputation, while it's great does something bad for them it over promises there's been a lot of people that have never been to disney or ritz carlton but i asked them i said what do you expect oh my god i expect if i go eh." and so they go there almost with a chip on their shoulder saying this place can't be this good right and i've got i've gone to disney and, and 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 i'm actually looking there's gotta be an employee here that's that that's having a bad day and I'm like looking for that person. I'm like, there's just no way, you know, all, you know, 10,000 boys could be that happy. And if I can <laughs> find that one, I'm, ah, there they are. And just think about how unfair that is, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you walk into another business and three people ignore you and one recognizes you, 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 you feel like you win the lottery. Well, you know, Disney, you know, nine, 90, you know, are, are smiling and one isn't. You're like all over them because they're Disney. Right. So, you know, it, it, it's the people that, you know, elevate us that when we fail and we're going to fail, but we, right. we, we can't be judgmental to, you know, we have to remember it's an emotional reaction. That's awesome. Uh, we're talking with, I, I love that. I just love that because Disney's so... Disney, it just changes the game for me. I don't know why. Every time you go to Disney, it just is a game changer. Uh, his name is John R. DeJulius III. His book is titled The Relationship Economy, Building Stronger Customer Connections in the Digital Age. Available on Amazon. Audible. It's available in all the formats, by the way, too. So don't don't just think you have to have the hardcover that I'm holding up here uh, for those of you who are watching on Facebook Live. Uh, don't don't feel that way. You can buy it. In, you can get have, listen to it. Did you read your own book, by the way, John? I did. I did. Uh, too many times. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've done that too. I, and I, I just, I think it works better. People like to hear, you know, so the voice that you're listening to right now could be the voice that you're listening to reading you this book. Oh, no, no, no I'm sorry. I thought you meant read it. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not the voice. I'm oh, I, the I voice. thought, oh, no, no. Yeah, that's what I meant. As if you were the, I have, I actually have done the readings of my own books. So that's, that's why I asked you uh, if you, if you did, no, if, if you no, did that. No. Oh, okay. So, John, uh, we've we've been on nearly 55 minutes to an hour already together. Can you believe it? I didn't realize that. It's crazy. It just the show goes so fast, and I'm always blown away how fast the show can go. Um, the show's called A New Direction, and by the way, you've been a fabulous guest, and I want to thank you. Thank you. But um, here's what I want you to do, and I want you to pontificate for a while. All right. I always ask people, my friends, because you're now a friend, um, unless I know you're kind of picky and choosy about them, but I'd like to be your friend. I yeah. want you to, <laughs> if you could leave people with a new direction, and I'm going to give you three to four minutes to do that, what would your new direction be for the listeners? You know, my, my favorite uh, two words, I'm, I'm, I'm into words, my favorite two words is uh, give more. Um, I think if you want to build long-term sustainable relationships in all areas of your life, you got to find ways to give more. And and what I mean by that is the the deal is the agreement says that you know you know one side is supposed to do A, B, and C, and and we're supposed to do X, Y, and Z. But I think too often in today's world, um, you know, more people are are cynical, and and so they wait. They may wait until the other party does what they promise, and then they provide what they're supposed to. Do. And so what I like to teach myself, my three boys, my 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 uh, employees is 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 don't wait, you know, deliver X, Y, and Z and, and throw in W, even though W wasn't part of the agreement and they weren't expecting it, give them more than they expect. Um, don't, don't wait, don't keep score and don't have a good memory. Um, don't remember three years ago when someone didn't do what they, they promised, you know, don't let that ruin it. And, and, uh, you know, that means if you borrow someone's pickup truck, um, you know, you give them, uh, you give them that pickup to move furniture, you give them that pickup truck back, 
with more gas and cleaner than how they gave it to you. And, you know, there's nothing that will come back to you uh, more better uh, 10 times than, than, you know, constantly finding ways to give more in all your relationships, personally, professionally, employee, employer, neighbor, you know, you name it, um, you know, significant other. So, you know, that, that, that's another, my, my word for 2020 is encourage. Um, and, and, and maybe I'm like just the last person to figure this out. But, you know, when I was writing the book, I, I don't know how I got on, you know, the way I've always liked the word encourage, but, you know, it's just another, you know, word out there that, but, but uh, I stumbled on something. And, and I think the Latin meaning of encourage is to put courage in. Correct. And, you know, I never thought about it that way. Mm. Courage in. And, and that's what our jobs are as parents, as leaders, as, as human beings is, is to put courage in others, you know, by saying, you know, Jay, you're awesome. I believe in you, you know, whatever that may look like, you know, Jay, Jay don't worry about it. you. you you're going to, you, you know, uh, you, you, while you're struggling, if I know anyone, you're going to be the one that, that, that learns from this and makes it the best lesson in your life. And so, you know, that's like my word for 2020 is just to find ways to put courage in in those around me. Mm, I love that. I, John, I am a firm believer that we can take the courage that I have and I can give it to someone else. I'm, I'm just a firm believer in it. I'm, I believe that sometimes some of us have more courage than others. And then I could take part of my courage and I can give it to someone who doesn't have that. And then I love that. And, and, you know, you talk about in the book that the word is encourage, uh, which is the French word for make strong. And I believe that that's what you do. And I believe that that's what this book does called the relationship economy. I believe that that is, I know that you don't just talk about it. I know you live it every day. I hear it in your voice and the people around the world have now heard it too. And I just want to say thank you with the utmost amount of gratitude for first of all being on the show and sharing your heart and your book and wanting to help so many people as you did so i want to just say thank you very much thank you jay it was such a, a an honor to be on your your show and and feel your energy it's inspiring thank you folks that's the show uh it could i i never you know i never know but you know what i didn't know about this show it was going to be brilliant and it was and it was fantastic you know what I tell you every week, right? Be inspired because when you're inspired, that means you can inspire others. And in turn, when they're inspired, that means they can inspire other people as well. And that can make this world an amazing place. I'm going to be back here next week with another great guest. So join us then, won't you? And by the way, thank you, Poland and Norway. You have joined us and have now been, a, we, we, we just are so grateful for you to come along the ride. And so we do appreciate you. So as I say every week to everybody everywhere, Ciao, everybody. to go a different way, yeah. The time has come for a new direction, yeah, yeah. New direction, yeah, yeah. When you lost your confidence and the answers don't make sense, you got to keep your hope alive. Got to know you can survive. This is your time.